my dear viewers, hello and welcome to a new episode of our program Inside Egypt, during which we're going to bring you the latest political, economic and social events that are taking place in Egypt. Please stay tuned. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi wrapped up a Saturday, uh, on Saturday a two-day uh, visit uh, to Bahrain where he attended the, the Manama Dialogue and held talks with Syrian uh, senior officials there. Uh, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi opened the 11th annual Manama Dialogue Security Summit in Bahrain on Friday in a speech which, which he stressed uh, the need for Arab unity. The details in the following report. Sisi said at the annual Institute Strategic Studies Conference Manama Dialogue in Bahrain that military intervention is not the only way to solve the current crises in different parts of the Middle East. In his speech in Bahraini capital Manama lit, on Friday, El Sisi highlighted Egypt's responsibility for endorsing a political solution in Palestine, Libya, Syria and Yemen. The Egyptian president spoke about his country's leading role in each of these countries. He also highlighted the extreme danger of the militias who have been working on the domination of the state's powers and laws. El Sisi also stressed that economic and social norms have great influence on any society. Meanwhile, he said that the international community recognized that the groups who were putting themselves under the umbrella of the religious parties have lost credibility and that their only aim was monopolizing the political scene in the Middle East and North Africa region. Following his arrival in Bahrain, El Sisi held talks with the Bahraini King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa concerning mutual cooperation and the regional crises. This visit marks the first for the Egyptian president to Bahrain since he was sworn in office in June 2014. Organized annually, the conference provides a forum for the national security establishments of the participating states to exchange views on regional security challenges. It is a unique forum in that it is made up of governmental delegations from over 20 countries. While well, the cabinet approved it in its meeting, the technical and of, uh, financial offer presented by an urban development uh, consortium uh, for the new administrative uh, capital, the details in the following report. The cabinet under Prime Minister Sharif Ismail approved the technical and financial proposal submitted by an urban development consortium to prepare the general scheme of Egypt's new administrative capital. During the economic conference held in Sharm el-Sheikh, the Egyptian government has announced plans to build a new capital to the east of the present one. The project on preparing the scheme is expected to cost 9.2 million Egyptian pounds. The cabinet also approved assigning an Egyptian-French group of companies to carry out the works of air conditioning and ventilation of the third line of Cairo's underground metro. Moreover, the cabinet approved a decision to issue a law to regulate the gas market activities and complete legal procedures in this regard. The proposed law calls for establishing an independent body to regulate, follow up and monitor the gas market activities. The body will be under the authority of the Minister of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. It will be tasked with ensuring providing high quality petroleum products for citizens and protecting the rights of consumers. The body will work also on attracting petroleum investments, and making optimal use of the infrastructure of networks. Meanwhile, the cabinet reviewed a program to develop the industry of vehicles and its intermediate industries, being a national program seeking to develop the industry of vehicles. During the meeting, Minister of Trade and Industry Tariq Kabil pointed out that the program aimed at maintaining the investment of car assembly industry sector and its intermediate industries. He added the program also targeted preserving the state resources from customs taxes on cars. The resort city of Sharm el Sheikh hosted a preparatory meeting for the Balaga summit on migration that will take place on the 11th and 12th of November. The meeting tackled uh, the common strategy to be implemented by European and African countries to deal with the migration phenomenon. More details in the following report by Nile TV's Linda Abdelati. Hosted the third senior officials meeting at the resort city of Sharm el Sheikh. 
In preparation for the Valletta Summit on Migration that will take place on the 11th and 12th of November, for his part, Assistant Foreign Minister for Multilateral Affairs and International Security, Ambassador Hisham Badr said that this meeting is held at a very critical time, adding that the phenomenon of migration and human trafficking has been having unprecedented dimensions since World War II. Badr added that as a result, international efforts are done to address this phenomenon. And within such framework, Egypt is playing an active role in fighting illegal migration and opening the room for legal migration. There are projects that the Egyptian government has uh, embarked upon. Some relate to capacity building. Some relate, for example, if you have a governor that will have youth like Fayoum going out there, then why don't you make a small factory for them? Water bottling projects, uh, capacity building, computer learning, co give them skills, touristic skills, so that they, they have these skills that can benefit the local economy, they can find a future, and if they can apply then for legal migration, then they are being able and empowered to be able to do that. The meeting was held with the participation of 75 European and African countries. It was also attended by a number of European and African international and regional organizations. In that sense, the meeting tackled ways to implement a common strategy between African and European countries to deal with the phenomenon of migration. We're trying to set up the, uh, some very concrete action on which we can work, both in the short term and in the long term. To give you a few examples, it's about circular migration. I know that here in Egypt this is something very important to allow for uh, uh, young people from Africa to come to Europe, get a qualification uh, or get a job for a certain period of time and then move back to um, move back to uh, to Egypt or to their country of origin afterwards another example is what we call triangular comparison young migrants from Africa being at the moment uh, staying at the moment in a country of transit um, not being allowed into Europe and try to find a way uh, to their present situation the idea is to see how we can help them and get a better qualification in the country of transit where they are with the support, the financial support of Europe. And after that, with this uh, improved and upgraded qualification, go back to their country of origin where we help them to find a job. Also, the human trafficking issue is one of the widespread phenomenon that is threatening a lot of countries, including the African continent. In this instance, um, the African governments have been working together with each other, cooperating, because it's a regional problem which needs a regional solution. So ministries of intelligence, state security, um, crime prevention uh, and law agencies are all coming together to share information and to see what common strategy can be developed and implemented in dealing with human smuggling and uh, trafficking programs or action have been launched, but we still have the impression, the feeling, all of us, that something more has to be done. Egypt was among the first countries to launch regional initiatives on migration and human trafficking phenomena, one of which is the EU Horn of Africa Migration Route Initiative in October 2014. And today Egypt is holding such a meeting in order to be part of this worldwide effort that aims at addressing the root causes of these phenomena. Linda Abdel Latif, Nile TV International. Well, Egypt's uh, central bank is expected to keep interest rates. The last turner of uh, CBE Governor Hisham Ramaz is uh, to be replaced by Deputy Governor Tor Amer when his tenure uh, expires on the 26th of November. The details in the following report. The Bank of Egypt and CBE decided to keep interest rates unchanged after the bank's monetary policy committee met on Thursday. The bank kept the overnight deposit rate, the overnight lending rate and the rate of the CBE's main operation at 8.75%.
9.75% and 9.25% respectively. Economists expected interest rates to remain unchanged in their last meeting in the tenure of CBE Governor Hishem Ramiz, who is to be replaced by Deputy Governor Tariq Aymer when his term ends on the 26th of November. They say the central bank is more likely to wait till year-end before raising interest rates as the Federal Reserve is expected to have its first interest rate hike since 2008. In a press release, the bank cited slowing inflation and improved growth rates for making its decision. Egypt's core inflation remained almost unchanged at 5.55% at the end of September, while real GDP grew by 3% in the third quarter of 2014-2015 quarter 3 to record 4.6% in the first nine months of the fiscal year. The Social Fund for, for Development in cooperation with UNPD and the Swedish Embassy in Egypt held an event under the name of Entrepreneur uh, Women's Day. Abir Metwali was there and filed in the following report for my TV. Development Fund in cooperation with United Nations Development Fund and the Swedish Embassy in Cairo hosted an event entitled The Leading Women. During this ceremony, the Secretary General of the Social Development Fund, Soha Ahmed, honored a number of entrepreneurs who have received a loan from the fund and worked in small and medium-sized projects and achieved great success. Today we're celebrating uh, the Women Entrepreneurs Day uh, in uh, collaboration with all our uh, donors and multinational institutions uh, who were uh, cooperating with us uh, the past years in uh, enhancing uh, economic empowerment for the women. Uh, the two major partners are UNDP uh, and the Sweden Embassy in light of today's event, but we have many other entities that are also supporting Social Fund in its role to uh, uh, achieve the economic empowerment for women. Uh, we have EBRD, we have African Development, we have World Bank, uh, and we have uh, plenty of uh, interference uh, through some of the embassies that are working in Egypt. The Swedish ambassador, Charlotte Spur, attended the event and participated in honoring the success of I think that women in every society play an absolutely crucial role, uh, but it is important that they both are given the equal opportunities, the equal rights, and that they can... Um, contribute to society for the benefit of both men and women and for the whole of the society and I think that we see a lot of positive movement in that respect. It's of course a long way to go but um, I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing. On the sidelines of the conference an exhibition was held for the sale of some products made by women included cost and margin simple profit. The United Nations is working in Egypt on several programs that support women's social, economic and political advancement. On behalf of the United Nations here in Egypt, how happy we are to be participating uh, to celebrate uh, Women's Entrepreneurship Day. Uh, I think this is an extremely important issue because when women's businesses grow uh, and when they are able to be having the potential to grow as economic entrepreneurs, it contributes to the growth of the country and the growth of the nation. Through ages, the Egyptian women are playing a major role in the society in all fields. Abir Metwali, Nile TV. Well, with this, my dear viewers, we come to the end of this episode of our program Inside Egypt, during which we've brought you the latest political, economic, and also social events that are taking place in Egypt. I hope you've enjoyed being with us. I'm Amal Mukhtar. Thank you for watching.